Okay. Finding general solutions to differential equations today. All right. So we have to do what's called a separation of variables. Got to get all the y's on the one side and the x's on the others. So to get the y's on one side and the x's on the other, we multiply by 3y squared and we multiply by dx on each side. Okay? So we'll wind up with 3y squared dy equals 2x dx. Okay? See how that works? Y is on one side, X is on the other. No, it's just wrestling, and I'm dealing with the state on stuff because they haven't figured it out. There's a new system this year, and they haven't figured it out yet. It's causing headaches. Yes, I'm recording. Yep, I am totally recording. So... All right, so now we're going to integrate each side. So 3y squared dy, what does this become if we integrate this? y cubed, right, yeah. equals x squared plus c. Because it's it has to have the plus c because we're uh, not, we don't have numbers. We're... No, because we only need plus C one place in the equation. So we only we put it on the side of X because if we have a constant and a constant, what's a constant plus a constant? Some other constant. So, yeah. All right. And then we get Y alone. How do we get Y alone? We take the cube root of both sides. So Y equals the cube root of X squared plus C. That's the general solution of that equation. So, how would this look like if you do the separation of variables? How would we get the y's together? Divide by y squared. Yeah, I divide by y squared. And then multiply by dx. So it would be 1 over y squared dy equals e to the x dx. Corruption, sorry. Hats are not to be worn in this building. If you choose to wear a hat, I'm going to take it, and you'll get it back at the end of the day. Please stop doing that. I would appreciate it. Thank you. Doing that. Okay, we got the angry Mr. Shaw there. Which would be this one? We good with that? Yeah. Okay. Marcus tried to solve this differential equation dy over dx equals 1 over 3x squared y squared. Did he make any mistakes in his work? Step one, he multiplied by 3y squared on each side and multiplied by dx on each side. Then he integrated both sides, so y cubed equals, and then this is x to the negative second dx, right? So you add 1 to the power, so it becomes x to the negative first with a negative 1 in front. So that looks right, right? And then he took the cube root of each side. Okay? So if he takes the cube root of each side, it looks like that, right? So, um, should there be a plus or minus? Because x cubed, hmm. You got it. The right answer of the equation should be that because it shouldn't be a plus or minus because it's an odd power. Oh my goodness. Okay. Ty tried to do this one. Did Ty make a mistake? So we multiply by EY first and multiply by DX. 
And then the integral of EY is e to the y. The integral of 4 over x is 4 ln of x plus c. So then we have to take the natural log of each side to get y alone. Because if we take the natural log of e to the y, it's just y. Okay, so to get rid of the e, we natural log both sides. So we natural log both sides. So then y is alone. Okay. Do you do the separation of variables correctly? Sure looks like it. The right hand should be ln of 4n plus the c outside. No. c should be inside. And the left hand should be the absolute value of y. Mm, I don't think so. I think Ty's work is correct. All right. So now we're supposed to solve this equation. Look at this one. Ooh, isn't this fun? What do we do? If we multiply this by 2 over 2, then we get 4x over 10y, right? So then we got 1 fraction x squared minus 4x over 10y because you can't have you can't take two different things over okay all right so then multiply so 10y dy equals x squared minus 4x dx okay then integrate this bad boy what does this become 5y squared equals one third x cubed minus two x squared, squared plus c. Got to remember the plus c. Plus c. And then what do we do to both sides to get y alone? Divide by five, Divide by five which is the same as multiplying by one fifth because we have fractions involved. So it's easier to see if we multiply by one fifth. So y squared equals one fifteenth x cubed minus two fifths x squared plus c. Because what's one fifth of a constant? It's still a constant, so you don't put c over 5. Then what do you do to each side? Take the square root. Take the square root. So y should equal that, which is that. Because you need the plus or minus. Okay? You guys are getting good at this. Yeah, but... This one, the C is on the outside. C has got to be on the inside. All right. This one, uh, this one's a very important one for what we have coming up. Okay? What's first step? Multiply by DI. Divide by Y and multiply by DX. So you get 1 over Y DY equals negative 10x to the fourth dx. Integrate, integrate. What's the integral of 1 over y? The ln of y equals, what's the integral of this? Negative 2x to the fifth plus c. Okay. How do you get rid of the ln of y? This is a super important, this this is a huge calculus thing. You're going to E both sides. So, I so think E to the ln of y equals E to the negative 2x to the fifth plus C. Okay? So this side's just y. You get that. Yeah. This side, when you add variables, it's E to the negative 2x to the fifth times e to the c because when you add exponents that's like x to the fifth times x to the fourth is x to the ninth right when you multiply these together so it's x to the five plus four 
equals x to the ninth. So if we separate this out and kind of go this way, then you have the same base. Okay? All right. So we got that. What is e to the c? Just another constant. We are getting good. So y equals e to the c is just a c, so we put that in front. c, e to the negative 2x to the fifth. Boom, boom, boom. That is huge in calculus. That's, that's a very important concept to understand. c, e to the negative 2x to the fifth. Boom. Okay? So, um, when we do, um, I think it's yet this chapter, we'll do growth and, um, and stuff like that, exponential growth, and it's, this equation really helps us out a lot. Okay, last one. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. <laughs> This ain't no fun. All right, how do we how do we separate the variables here? But we still have white. You need to put the white. Oh, we have the white there. Ah. Yeah. Okay. So we start with the y over dx equals x squared y squared over eight plus y squared. And then I'm going to throw an 8y squared over 8 here. Okay? So dy dx equals x squared y squared plus y squared all over 8. Okay. Now do I get them separated? All right. Hello. Yep. Yep. Taylor. Phone call for you. Divide is not the correct word, but yeah, you're doing that, but it's not the correct word. F. F A C <laughs> Miles F A C T O R Factor <laughs> Miles <laughs> uh, Sure <laughs> Yeah Now, we had to factor out the y squared, so now we can separate it. So, 1 over, so if we divide by y squared, 1 over y squared dy equals... So now we can divide by y squared? Yeah, yeah because it's separated out. Which it's a multiplication problem. Here we have addition. Yeah, but when... We can't just move it. you want to divide something and the student's adding, don't you divide from just both? Everything. Yeah, but we need to we need to factor it out so we can see it better. Miles, I'm sorry. You can visualize it, but all right. Um, boy, should we take that eight over two? Let's take that eight over two. So let's put an eight up there and go x squared plus one dx. All right. Now what? When you integrated, it be 8ln of y squared? Nope. No? Okay. I don't remember that either. Because it's, what this is, is 8y to the negative second. So it becomes y to the negative first with a negative 8 in front, right? And integrate this. This is one third x cubed plus x plus c. Which is, yeah, you know, one third x cubed plus x plus c. Okay. Whew. 
Now what? Well, we could divide everything by 8. So y to the negative first equals 1 24th x cubed plus negative 1 24th x cubed plus negative 1 8th x plus c. Because 1 8th to c is c. All right. How do I make y to the negative first into y? What? Um, not exactly. What you need to do is you have to make just one solid fraction on the right and then inverse it. So, so y to the negative first equals all this, no, over 24. So it's negative x cubed minus 3 because if you multiply by 3 over 3, you get 24. 3x plus c, because whatever, over 24. And if you flip it, everything, because they're fractions now, y flipped over equals 24 over x negative x cubed minus 3x plus c. Negative x cubed minus 3x plus c. Oh, did I make a mistake with that 3? Mmm, 24, negative, because boy, it sure looks a lot like this one. I wonder if I made a little mistake somewhere along here somewhere. Because it, this looks like it. I think that's a, that's the right answer. Okay. We'll just, we'll just. We'll just go with that. All right. Can we do S separations of variables on this one? Yes or no? Can we do separation of variables? No. Why can't we just multiply each side by this? Sure. And multiply by this. So it's 3y minus y squared dy equals cosine of x dx. Does that make sense? Y is on one side, X is on the other. Yes, you can do separation of variables. Okay. Can we do separation of variables on this? No, because we got addition and subtraction there, and you can't just you can't just move this across and then multiply. No, it does not work. This one's a no. Addition and subtraction with X's and Y's does not. You can't separate them. Yes, you can with this. And you're going, well, you just said addition, subtraction. Well, this is a little different because it's E's. So dy dx equals e to the x times e to the y by what I explained earlier. So 1 over e to the y dy equals e to the x dx. Oh, we got them separated. So these are yeses and noes. Um, if you want to know by passing.